Thank you. Alexander just told us that we need to do this very fast because the pizza is already, is already out there. So there's a bit of pressure, pressure on us, but we will try. Um, we will talk about how to drive revenue with personal videos. And I'm Casper. I work here as a partner manager, which is also AKA sales uh, people and in the sales department, because what I do is actually with our partners selling our platform and tools. And uh, I'm Daniel. I work as a product evangelist, which essentially means I also work in between marketing and sales, obviously. So yeah. Yeah. So this is just a quick introduction. I will also give you a short introduction into the place we are and what we actually do here. So what we are in is one of our offices is our headquarters here in Copenhagen. We also have an office in San Francisco. And what we do is, is, is essentially have video touch points across the entire organization, which means that normally and traditionally you will only think about video in marketing. But what we will present tonight is actually where we can start doing these video touch points across the entire organization. And we will talk about one of the areas uh, we, will, we can touch. So normally when we talk about the video marketing, we talk about uh, webinars and our, uh, and our core product, with, which, which is the video marketing platform. But we will show you something different today. And this is some of the organizations we touch every single day. And right now, this is the topic. I will go back to the topic I actually came from. So I will talk about the sales paradigm shift and what we see in sales right now. So what we see in sales, uh, and we have seen it earlier, is what you also have seen if you have watched The Wolf of Wall Street. This is where we actually, as salespeople, had the power. We could actually persuade a lot, of, um, a lot of the customers. We have the full control over the buyers because we, as a salesperson, had all of the information. The buyers need to call us and we could tell them all the information. The problem was just that some of these uh, salespeople before us, essentially, they actually abused this power they had. So. This means that sales right now has a very, very negative and bad, um, <laughs> bad perception. So if you take a look around here, you can not even trust anyone in here. If also, if we look at these stats, right? <laughs> so as I have counted, we are maybe 30 people in here. So there's only three people we actually can trust. Daniel and I are not salespeople, if you look at our title. <laughs> so there's only one more in here. And... Um, if we take a look into the next phase of sales that we have seen, is that what we call the information overload. Because before we used the phone, now we have the internet. So now the buyers have to equal the power more between the salespeople and, and the buyers. This means that right now, uh, in some uh, industries, the buyers maybe are cl more clever than the salespeople because they can they can look up and blog post it, they can watch videos and stuff like that. And this is also means that they need, and you as salespeople need to be more clever than before, but you actually also need to actually give people the information to really trust them and also to build up this trust. Because right now they need information. And if we look at some of the stats here from Gartner, we can actually see that if you can provide the information that the customers need, and are looking for, and you can thereby create this uh, value um, for the customers, you will actually get better deals with lower regrets. And this means that we actually need to work and be more as a trusted advisor. But if we actually look into how many of, of us is actually trusted advisor, if we look from the consumer's perspective, then we have a big problem, or we have a big uh, opportunity. This is how we can turn it around and look at how we will. But this also means that we actually need to do something to have a greater uh, and a closer relationship to our, uh, to our customers and the buyers at the end. So this also means that what we are t talking about is actually we are going into this connected, uh, more connected uh, relationship with our, um, with our buyers and our customers. So we actually need to focus on build up all of these real human connections and relationships to our buyers and actually start to talk about uh, their needs and actually get to know them even more than we have before. One way of doing it is, of course, using videos because now we can actually express 
our, our personalities also, like uh, Camilla also talked about, because and we can use gifts and stuff like that. But this is the way actually of be even closer to the customers. So we use the facial expressions and stuff like that to actually show that we are humans. Uh, because it, ha it has been super easy also to customize emails uh, just by throwing a, a, a name and then it could just, we could just do all of these automatic. But we need to do something more to actually get closer and we need to be more personal. Because if we look at why uh, salespeople are not closing deals, um, according to a, uh, a Howard Business Review, then if we look at, at, at all of these uh, reasons, se uh, six, uh, six out of seven of these reasons has something to do with the emotional intel intelligence, which means that we actually need to be more connected. We need actually to know the bias. Um, and I think the seventh reason is also the most important, that we even established a personal connection with the bias. So the bias really want us to establish a connection with them, and they also really want uh, to get to know us. So we need to establish all of these connections if we really want to have a long uh, relationship uh, at the end. Not only if we wanted to do a sale right now, but if we also want to have them as advocate at the end for, for the businesses. So if we look into how, how, less, uh, how less and lesser time actually they use, the buying group are using actually meeting with us salespeople, then we, if we look into also uh, a research from Gartner, we can see here that they use a lot of time uh, a lot of their time actually without us. So if we look at these stats, only 17% of the buying process and the time uh, they use when they have to make a buying decision is inviting us in and then actually have a meeting with us. It not, not being said that if when they are researching and when they also have a meeting with uh, some of the buying, uh, with some in the buying group, that we cannot be there because we can make these videos and uh, Daniel will tell you later about how we actually can be part of, of the buying group and how also when they start uh, looking for uh, research and stuff like that. So the next thing we have to talk about, and this will be my <laughs> switch over to Daniel, is how can we actually create engaging videos in seconds and also grow revenue with them. I feel like we look so cute here, right? <laughs> yeah. A couple of besties. <laughs> so, uh, like Casper just mentioned, obviously we're moving into a hyper-personalized era. Uh, of course, also Nicolas and uh, Camilla talked about this, personalization is everything. This is really where our profession as salespeople is moving towards, uh, and video is a key element to that. The only thing that's left now really is kind of updating our medium of communication uh, of how we actually achieve that kind of personalization. So uh, there's a couple of very high growth companies, uh, some of them you probably know like Plio and Templify uh, that are already adopting this kind of hyper-personalization using personalized video. And obviously companies like Plio, they're just upstairs. I noticed that they just keep taking up more uh, office space here as they're growing. Uh, I hope video probably has a lot to do with that. Uh, but I just have one goal today actually. Uh, I wanna give you all super actionable insights that you can all use on Monday. So when you go back to the office on Monday, you're gonna have some real concrete things in your toolbox that you can actually use. Uh, and I wanna walk through uh, every key aspect of the sales funnel from uh, the very beginning uh, to prospecting, demos, closing, and obviously expanding our accounts using personalized videos. So let's start off talking about prospecting a little bit. Prospecting, okay, some things that I kind of, I preach a lot is that cold calling is, is kind of dead, in my opinion. Uh, I know some people might disagree with it. Uh, let's have a discussion about that at the end, maybe. But I think cold calling is an kind of, this is moving away. This is something that's, it's annoying people. It's not very effective. Uh, only 2% of cold calls actually lead to real meetings. Uh, meanwhile, the majority of buyers are saying that they actually want to watch a video in the sales process. They don't want to just be called up at uh, inconvenient times. Um, the solution, it's the video pitch. What is a video pitch, you might ask? Uh, video pitch is basically think of yourself as uh, sending an email, uh, a video inside of an email embedded, where you do your pitch, you present yourself uh, maximum in two minutes, present yourself the problem you're trying to solve with a concrete example, maybe even include a, a customer video, uh, like a customer success story video after you present yourself to kind of grab the attention and prove your point a little bit more. 
Uh, a key thing that a lot of people, when I bring this up, is that an objection I just want to address right off the bat. A lot of people say they feel awkward on camera. And to be honest with you, you are going to feel a little bit awkward. I feel a little bit awkward sometimes, at least in the beginning. The only way to really get rid of this is practice, practice, practice. Uh, I want to show you some examples of some, some fuck-ups from some of the, the experts. Um, our VP of marketing, I'm going to throw him under the bus here and show you a blooper. This is, um, yeah, let's do that one again. And how businesses, businesses, I hate that word. No company, <laughs> no brands, how brands. It's on Wednesday, oh, February sorry. sorry, guys. I hope you saw that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to embarrass myself a little bit as well. Hey, Allison. Danny back from 23 here. Uh, so as the marketing director of Kingsley and Napoli, I'm sure that you are aware. Ah, uh, fuck, look, 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 I fucked up the name there. Kingsley and Napoli. What a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously, don't include that. Make sure you edit your videos. <laughs> edit out the bloopers and don't offend people. Otherwise, obviously, you're not going to get very far. Uh, but yeah, like I mentioned, the only way to get that those jitters out is just fucking do it. Like get started with it, do it with a colleague, have like a practice session, and just send videos to each other and get the jitters out. Moving on to uh, demos. So, a reality in sales that we all face is that, uh, and this was touched upon earlier as well today, and uh, I believe it was Camilla's presentation that it's very hard to reach decision makers. Uh, and the reality is that decision makers don't want to join your first demo calls, especially not early on in the, in the sales process, which leaves us with kind of more junior people that are kind of gatekeepers, and we need to get past those people. Because what happens is when we rely on junior people, they basically have to do the selling for us. We just have to kind of hope that, okay, we nail this pitch, and then they go off to their, uh, to their boss, and then they kind of hope that you know, they do a good job of that. So we kind of give up a lot of control. The only way to kind of get past that is the hype video. That's what I'm calling it. Uh, trademark pending, actually. So. so the kind of hype video is where you recap your, vi uh, your demo right after the call. Uh, while it's still fresh in your mind, do a screen share, show what you actually showed in the call. Obviously, condense it so it's not too long. You want to have it maximum two or three minutes, just with the key elements that they have to remember. And then ask them to share that video. Say, hey, great meeting. I really love that meeting. Uh, here's a quick video to recap that you can share internally with your team. And most people, don't, they don't do this, obviously. That's why it kind of, it's going to build up hype. People are going to share it. Every time I do this, I can go in and obviously see how many times it's been watched by different people in the organization. So you build up champions for yourself. How do you do that? Track the, the, the person who see. Uh, I have, I'm going to tell you that in a second. <laughs> you're gonna, and you're going to like it. <laughs> so I'll tell you that towards the end. <laughs> okay, cool. So moving on, let's say, okay, you did that, it worked freaking great, and now you're getting closer to closing. And you want to kind of collect the final signatures, but key problem, this happens to all of us, it's the end of the month, we kind of want to um, meet our quotas, our boss are, is kind of breathing down our neck a little bit to get the last signatures uh, pending, this guy can relate. <laughs> so, so basically, um, the reality here is that buyers don't really care about your deadlines or your quotas or whatever, they care about themselves, right? So the solution here is the final push video. So I like to do a video um, when I'm in this situation where I kind of, I'm using Casper as an example here. Um, so basically I like to do, send like a friendly video as a kind of follow up and then kind of push them with kind of a closing offer which you might do anyways. Say like, hey, if you sign by this week, uh, you get like five, 10% off for example. Uh, do that via video format and it conveys much better. So we've closed the account. Uh, we're moving on to expanding these accounts, and this is really where we want to transition from sales to CS. Uh, what happens in a lot of times when we want to do that transition is that sometimes as salespeople, we can think a little bit transactionally. Uh, sometimes we don't necessarily good, do a good job of handing that over. Some people, maybe after they get that signature and the bonus hits their bank account, they don't really give a shit anymore. Uh, that's the, an old school method of doing it. That's kind of the Wolf of Wall Street method, uh, which doesn't work anymore. So you need to make sure that you do a smooth transition from sales to CS. And doing so via video is a great way of doing it. Um, and also keeping in touch with that person is very important. Because maybe six months down the line, you want to identify an upsell opportunity for yourself. But that's not going to happen if they don't remember your name, right? So solution is the check-in video. The check-in video is basically uh, put a calendar invite for yourself, a calendar a reminder for yourself, where you basically say, okay, every couple months or every two weeks, whatever fits your, uh, your ICP, 
uh, send a video to that person and even collaborate with your uh, CS person to do that. Maybe you can do a video where it starts off with yourself and then you hand over to CS, for example, so it has a nice collaborative and personal flow to it. And then hopefully, yeah, once uh, you get down the line to upsell opportunities, you have that fruitful relationship going. And I think this relates a lot to Nicholas's talk as well, uh, with kind of having those human connections and relationships and not just kind of transactional. <laughs> Was there a question? Yes, I got wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Cool, so we kind of went through every key aspect of the sales funnel here, and we had some great kind of concrete examples that you can actually use on Monday. Uh, but I think the key to getting started with videos and sales is integrating this into your workflow, actually kind of getting in the habit of doing it. And a good way of doing so is putting an actual to-do thing on your uh, calendar. Say, okay, at you know, 11 a.m. Monday morning, I'm not gonna actually do this. I'm gonna pick one of these videos and try it out. And I have kind of a task for us all here because I think we should actually do that right now together. Maybe let's take out our phones, put it on your to-do list for Monday. I'll wait. <laughs>